Hi, in today's video, we're going to talk about the next database option, which is auto update statistics. Now, before we can get into auto update statistics, it's probably a good idea to figure out why you need to update statistics in the first place. Uh, some of this was covered in the previous video and uh, essentially it boils down to the fact that SQL Server needs to know how many rows it's going to end up fetching when it runs a query. And by knowing that, it's able to size the memory appropriately, decide whether parallelism, scan, seeks, the type of join algorithm, etc. That needs to be used. So by updating the statistics, all you're really doing is some maintenance to ensure that SQL Server always has the relevant information available. Now, before I tell you about the option itself, I think it's critical to kind of understand that you shouldn't be relying on this option. Uh, very much the same way that when you create a database, you pre-size the MDF and LDF files and don't rely on auto growth. The same way you will still do preventive maintenance on your databases by rebuilding indexes and updating stats as part of your standard uh, DBA tasks. And these features are really just a backup in case something gets uh, thrown for a loop. So a good DBA is always about preventive maintenance. And in that case, you're going to be updating statistics. You're going to be using partitions and uh, updating stats by partition, rebuilding indexes by partition. Uh, you'll also be looking at filtered indexes, uh, filtered stats, those kind of things. That's what you want to be doing. And just in case, you would probably want to go ahead and enable these features as well. So by default, what you get when you have your database is the fact that you have in the database options auto update stats set to true and auto update stats asynchronously set to false now before we can talk talk about asynchronous uh, update of stats i thought i'd show you this script so all i'm really doing here is i'm uh, uh, checking a wait type called wait on sync statistics refresh which tells you uh, what sequ what amount of time sql server spent uh, refreshing the statistics for uh, a table now, there are two types of statistics to refresh, which is the synchronous and the asynchronous. So in the synchronous, what happens is when you run a query, SQL Server looks at the database to identify if the statistics are up to date. And if it isn't, SQL Server synchronously, as in in advance, creates the statistics or updates the statistics, and then using the new information comes up with the execution plan. So in this case, if you don't have updated statistics, there is an extra delay because of the fact that the statistics need to be created, and then you can use them for the execution plan. Uh, in an asynchronous statistic uh, update, what happens is SQL Server looks at the statistics, identifies it's, it's not up to date, but doesn't bother to create the updated statistics right now. And in fact, branches off into two parallel processes, one going ahead and executing the query, while the other one in the background asynchronously updates the stats. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this. So I've got this query here where I'll check the current wait time for uh, this uh, database uh, server. I've got a, data, uh, a table that I'm inserting some data into. And uh, once that's done, I've got a select statement and I'm just dropping the temp table that I created previously, followed by uh, a query to fetch some data from the uh, extended event. So I've created an extended event and in there, there's an event called uh, auto stats, which triggers every time a statistics is up to date, up updated. And uh, this is what the data in that looks like. So let's go ahead and just run this query real quick. And you'll see that right now it took, uh, there are 80 tasks and there's one, three, four, nine uh, milliseconds of uh, wait time. Let's run it again, see if it changes. It doesn't. So what this means at the moment is that even though I'm inserting data into the table, the statistics doesn't need to be refreshed. So SQL Server is just reusing the existing statistic that is available. At some point when I insert sufficient amount of rows, this number is gonna change. And when it does, we'll find the events associated with that further down. So let's just go ahead, keep running this until we trigger an auto update stats. And there we go. So you can see the waiting task count has increased by one. And you'll also see that the waiting time has increased. And when you do this, you'll see at the moment that we've got auto update stats triggered. And you'll notice that the time taken for this auto update stats to complete keeps increasing over time with the fact that uh, more and more data is being inserted into the table. So that's what a synchronous uh, auto update stats does it stops the query from running it updates the statistics and then gives the query uh, that information to come up with a more efficient execution plan so th the thing that you want to watch out for here is the fact that auto update statistics when enabled is more of a backup in case your statistics are not refreshed and if not done properly it may actually cause queries to perform slower simply because of the fact that the table needs to be uh, 
updated or the statistics need to be updated. Uh, the, the caveat here is the fact that prior versions of SQL Server, especially SQL Server 2014 and below, had a log algorithm where uh, what happens was the first 500 rows plus every 20% of rows after that is what triggers the, um, the stats update. And as you can imagine, as the table becomes larger, the difference between subsequent update stats increases because 20% of 2 million is uh, smaller compared to 20% of 2 billion. And that obviously meant that your updating of statistics becomes even more critical as the other, other tables become larger. And as you can see here, the larger the table, the more time it takes to scan and sample that data. And you want to avoid that. So that's where the preventive maintenance comes into play. Uh, the newer versions of SQL Server have a different algorithm that's a bit more aggressive where it uh, essentially what it does is it takes a current count of rows, multiplies it by a thousand and then takes the square root. And what this does is as the, uh, the volume of data increases, the threshold reduces and it becomes more and more aggressive. And if you do a percentage of the total row count, it comes to amount, amount, uh, around 30%, uh, then it becomes like 0.3%, then it becomes like 0.003% of the table. And it'll just keep reducing as you... Uh, insert more data into the table and become more aggressive. So with that algorithm, what happens is that you might end up having to fire off uh, auto update stats more frequently in some cases when uh, you're doing an ETL operation or something of that sort. So when you were doing auto update stats, what you want to watch out for is the fact that you need to enable it, but you don't want to rely on it. You want to still do your preventive maintenance on your own and leave this more as a backup to protect yourself. And that's why it should be set to true. Now. If that's set to true, the question then becomes when should you use asynchronous auto-update stats? And for asynchronous auto-update stats, what you're basically trying to do is give the customer a predictable uh, user experience where a query needs to run in X amount of time regardless of whether the stats are up to date or not. And in these cases, you don't want SQL Server to run in 5 seconds in one query and 50 seconds in another query just because it took more time to scan the, uh, the underlying table and update the stats. So if that's what you're trying to avoid, that's when you want to use asynchronous auto-update stats is equal to on. Now, what you want to try and find a balance here in this case is the, the difference between the time it takes to update the statistic versus how much of performance impact a bad plan would have on your query. Because if your statistics is not up to date, you're using a bad plan typically. And uh, that in itself causes another set of performance issues. So it's kind of trying to find a balance between performance issues caused by synchronous update of statistics versus performance issues caused by asynchronous or uh, not asynchronous, but basically a bad execution plan because the stats are not up to date. And one critical way that you want to be able to do that is by looking at this uh, weight type here and seeing how frequently or how large this value becomes over time. If you find it becoming larger and larger over time, you might want to consider using an asynchronous statistic update. And uh, what will happen in that case is that the current query will still suffer a performance hit because it's not using the latest statistics. But anything after that will continue to perform well because the next guy has already got the updated statistics. Uh, for those of you who are not really comfortable with SQL Server or statistics, which I know there are quite a few people out there, you want to think of it in terms of money in your wallet, where when you want to go shopping, you first look at how much money you have in your wallet. And if you realize that you don't have sufficient money, the first thing you want to do is go to the ATM. So you synchronously go to the ATM and refresh or update your wallet. And there is an additional delay between now and the time you can shop just because of that one additional fact. The problem that you might face is sometimes there's a queue at the ATM and the response time becomes unpredictable. Uh, and that's when you want to look at asynchronous auto-update stats. So in asynchronous auto-update stat, you might think of it like you and your partner going shopping and you realize there's a queue at the ATM. So you drop, drop off your partner uh, who's waiting in the queue to uh, refresh or uh, fetch, fetch money. And at the same time, you still go ahead and do shopping so that even though there is, it's not an ideal circumstance, it's uh, good enough because the job gets done and at least the next time you go, you're better prepared. I know that's not a great example, but uh, that's the closest thing I could come to off the top of my head. So I hope this video makes it clear about when you want to be using auto update stats uh, 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 true versus auto update stats asynchronous equal to true. Uh, the Microsoft recommendation is to leave it at the defaults, which I think for old TAP systems works fine. For data warehousing systems, I would prefer to put the auto update stats asynchronous to on. But uh, that's a different story for another uh, video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching.